Hello guys, today we are diving into the world of inverting summing amplifiers. This circuit adds and inverts two input signals. How and why? Let's find out. Last time we explored the mysterious world of the inverting amplifiers. The inverting summing amplifier is like his cousin. Just there are some design challenges, but don't worry, we'll check them as well. Just like inverting amplifier, this type of amplifier needs a negative supply as well, that is VEE. Let's consider we have two signals. One signal is of minus 2.5 volts to 2.5 volts with 1 kHz frequency sine wave. And other one is minus 200 millivolts to 200 millivolts signal with 10 kHz frequency. Now we need to add this signal and take these signals for a different signal processing. When we do inverting summation of this signal, this is how it should look like. The frequency of the signal will be 10 kHz and its amplitude will go from minus 4.9 volts to 4.9 volts. That's what we want from this circuit. So this is how this circuit looks like. We'll use a TLV170 op amp from Texas Instruments for this amplifier design. As you can see, we are adding VCC and VEE both to this op amp. We have to connect the signal at the input. It needs a negative feedback. That means we give some chunk of output signal to the inverting terminal of the op amp through a resistor. And we provide our signal to the same inverting terminal through a resistor. The non-inverting terminal would be grounded. Well, we have to use this op amp in the linear region. The input impedance of the circuit depends on the input resistance which we have connected over here. The value of these resistors should be selected considering the output impedance of the signal source. Though it should be larger than the source impedance, but not too big or else it can degrade the phase margin of the circuit and add additional noise. There are several calculations we have to do in order to select the op amp and its peripheral circuit reads. Let's see those. This is the transfer function of the amplifier design. The relationship between input voltages and output voltage are given by this equation. So there are three variables in this equation. We at least need two variable values to solve this equation. First, we'll choose a resistor value for R3 as 20K. Well, we can find the value of the resistor R1 by knowing how much gain is required for this stage to this amplifier to amplify this signal. The gain of this first stage is nothing but R3 upon R1. Also its gain can be calculated with this formula, where we have all of these values considering the input and output waveforms. So this value will come out to be 0.98 volt per volt. And using this equation, we can calculate the value of R1, which is 20.4K. We'll use 20.5K ohm resistance instead of this because it's a standard resistor value. Now, using the same method, we can calculate the required gain of the second input stage using this equation. So, required gain would be 9.8 volt per volt and required R2 would be 2.04K or 2.05K ohm resistance. Now, let's find out if our amplifier can handle that 10 kilohertz signal or not. To check that, we have to consider the non-inverting gain and the gain bandwidth product which is mentioned in the op amp datasheet. So the gain bandwidth product of the op amp is 1.2 megahertz. Now we'll calculate the non-inverting gain of this op amp. Using this formula and considering the input resistance as the equivalent parallel resistance, we got the non-inverting gain. And from these parameters, we can calculate the bandwidth of the op amp for this circuit, which is 102 kilohertz. So this guy can take 
10 kilohertz signal with no problem. Now to avoid stability issues, we have to see if the zero set by these passive components like gain setting resistors and input capacitance of the op amp is greater than the bandwidth of the circuit, which can be calculated by this formula. The resistance would be the equivalent parallel resistance of this R1, R2 and R3. And this value is 15.6 MHz, which is greater than 102 kHz. These capacitors are the common mode and differential input capacitance of the TLV170. These values can be obtained in the data sheet. Last but not least, we need to calculate the minimum sleeve rate required for this application. It's like checking if our amplifier can keep up with the pace, which can be calculated with this formula, where Vp is 4.9 volts, which is maximum output voltage, and frequency of the signal is 10 kHz. So the required sleeve rate would be 0 0.31 volt per microsecond. Luckily for us, this op amp has a sleeve rate of 0.4 volt per microsecond, which is more than enough for our needs. Now we'll see the simulation of the circuit. I'm using Tina TI software to showcase the simulation. Well, instead of TLB170, I'm using OPA170 because it was easier for me to do the simulation in this, but there is no change. Then we have R1, R2 and R3. The component values are the same as we calculated. We have two different signals at the input which are 5 volt peak to peak with 1 kilohertz frequency and 500 millivolts peak to peak with 10 kilohertz frequency. And now we'll do the simulation. So you can see this is one input and this is the another input and this red signal is the inverting summation of both of the signals. It ranges from minus 4.9 volts to plus 4.9 volts with 10 kilohertz. And its phase, it shifted to 180 degrees. Well, the output is what we have expected from this design. Well, we can add multiple inputs to this circuit instead of just two, where we will need multiple input resistors and there will be changes in the design calculations as well. We can use this inverting amplifier as digital to analog converters, audio mixing, or as a DC offset for negative signals. The foundation of the digital to analog converters is based on the summing amplifiers. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you picked up something from this. The reference of this design is added in the description below. While checking the reference, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. It's right over there. Well, I'll see you next time. Till then, stay hungry, stay foolish.